Okay, so yesterday Anthropic introduced Claude Sonnet 4.5, and no doubting that this model is really good. They claim it's the best coding model in the world, but there's a lot more to this release than what people are actually seeing at the surface level. So to get started with this, I want to go back to a cold day in January in Davos, Switzerland, where Dario Amode, the CEO of Anthropic, first started talking about the virtual collaborator. Listen to this little excerpt where he first previewed what Anthropic would be aiming for in 2025. Is we are planning this right. year in 2025 to build something called that we call the virtual collaborator. And the idea is that that, that would be an agent that operates on, operates on your computer, on right. a computer, might, might operate at work, and you can give it tasks. You can say, you know, write, write this uh, feature for this app. Uh, and, you know, it'll write some code, it'll compile the code, it'll check the code, it'll talk to its coworkers on Slack or on Google Docs right. or, on, or on some other uh, uh, platform. It'll check in with you to see how, you're, to, to see how the task is progressing. So over, over the next year, we're going to be gradually putting out the pieces of this vision. Right. So now looking at back on that at the end of September, at the end of the third quarter of this year, we can see that Sonnet 4.5, the actual model, is just one of the steps in getting to the point where Anthropic will be able to release the virtual collaborator. So I'm going to go through some of the things about the model and about the release, but I want to point out each of these elements are adding up to make the virtual collaborator possible. And this is one of the things that I find most fascinating about Anthropic is that while everyone else is having big releases or big sort of developer days and stuff like that, we've seen that they're the company that tends to just drop a model or drop a tool like Claude Code, which basically empowers people to do a lot of different things without always talking about some grand vision or some path to AGI. So this particular release by Anthropic includes a lot more than just the model itself. But first, let's look at some of the things about the model. So clearly Anthropic has gotten a lot more confident from people using Claude code and from people using their models for coding. And I think it's been pretty clear for most of this year that Claude Sonnet and Claude Opus have been the coding models to beat. Now in the last couple of months, we've seen OpenAI come along with Codex. We've seen a number of the Chinese models release models that were much better than previous efforts that they had done for coding models. But pretty much consistently, Claude has been the model that people have wanted to use for coding. The only exception being that either it was very expensive or that it was very slow. Now, while Sonnet 4.5 hasn't addressed the issues about making it any cheaper for the moment, they have made the model a lot faster with people like Devon, who had early access to this model, claiming that this is twice as fast as the previous model. So that's definitely going to be a win for people wanting to code, but it was also something that was needed to be able to create Anthropic's vision of a virtual collaborator. Now, if we jump into the benchmarks, we can see that, okay, not only is Claude Sonnet better than the previous versions of itself, it's certainly outperforming GPT-5 and Gemini 2.5 Pro. But for me personally, that's not the issue about these benchmarks. The thing that's really interesting here is the bump on benchmarks for things that actually relate to the virtual collaborator. So one of the huge things with this model is that it's gotten a lot better at agentic uses. So the first one being coding, we can see the SWE bench verified here, and they're doing it on the full 500 evals here, not a reduced amount like some companies have done. And we can see here that it looks like it's doing a lot better than GPT-5 Codex, a lot better of the previous version of Sonnet and the most recent Opus 4.1 in here. So we look at the difference in here, we can see that this is basically running with parallel test time compute, which is very similar to what Gemini DeepThink does. So we don't know whether that's going to be practical for when you actually put something like this into production or not. But even without that, we see that Sonnet has got a clear lead. The next element that's needed in the virtual collaborator is the ability to actually have really good, strong, reliable agents. And we can see here with all of these benchmarks, there's definitely a step forward with this model 
being able to perform better, not only on the quality of benchmarks, but they claim on this model that can actually go out to 30 hours on certain complex tasks and still keep its focus. Now, obviously that's using an agent scaffold and doing multiple calls to the model, et cetera. Before I go on to their new agent SDK, look at one of the other benchmarks here that is really telling the computer use benchmark. So they realize for the virtual collaborator, the model needs to be able to interact with the browser, interact with your computer. So you can see we're getting a huge increase over the previous versions of Sonnet and of Opus 4.1 with this model for computer use. And this is something that they haven't really even talked about that much with this release. All right, so the next big part of this release, which is not just the model, but clearly the model is made to actually work with this, is their whole release of what they're now calling the Claude Agent SDK. So the early version of this was basically the Claude Code SDK, and it basically was what Claude Code was built with. So with this release, Anthropic has actually made that underlying SDK, their version of an agent SDK. And you can see here that they talk about realizing that the agent harness that powers Claude Code could actually be used for other agents as well. And that's why they renamed it from Claude Code SDK to Claude Agent SDK. And they talk a lot about the design principles behind this, the whole idea of this being able to manipulate memory by writing and reading and editing files as it goes along. And in this case, they actually talk about accessing the user's computer via the terminal. So with this SDK, we're not quite fully with the virtual collaborator like we would have where it's basically just reading your screen, but it can do a lot of the things from terminal. And I'll talk about something else that they've updated, which does give them access to a lot of the things from your screen. Now, interestingly in here, they talk a lot about the different kinds of agents that this is actually going to empower people to build. But I think one of the most interesting things in here is actually this sort of definition of the Claude agent SDK loop and the whole idea of it basically having a set of tools to gather context, a lot about context manipulation, context engineering in here, having the tools or MCPs to actually take action on things and actually do things, but also then having tools or ways to actually verify that work and be able to run this loop again and again. So they talk about how the SDK allows it to basically gather context, different kinds of search that it can basically do to pull things into modern context. They make some interesting comparisons around semantic search versus agentic search and how they're finding actually the agentic search tends to be better for working with agents and then perhaps using tools for the semantic search like RAG and stuff like that. Obviously the SDK takes into account things like sub agents. And if we look at the take action part of the loop, we can see here that they've got a whole bunch of tools that they're talking about both built in tools and the ability for you to make custom tools in here. And of course, take advantage of things like MCPs to be able to take some of these actions. Now, the third step of verifying your work for me, I think this is actually the most interesting area of agents at the moment. The thing that I am seeing that works the most is not just building custom tools, but building custom verifiers. And here they go into some of the different ways that they're actually doing the verification for things by using things like MCPs, like Playwright, which can see your screen, can update the model about things that it's seeing, etc. LLM as a judge to basically test and give feedback on the quality of the outputs that the models generated. Now, overall, this SDK, probably many people are going to focus on using it with something like Claude Code, but I do think in a future video, I'll come back and actually talk a little bit more about some of the interesting things that I've noticed as I've started to build some demos with this Claude Agent SDK by itself. Another part of this release that actually makes this model even more interesting is this whole sort of backend that they've built where they can actually manage the context on the Claude developer platform. So you can think about this now as when you're making calls, you're not just using the actual model, you're using their Claude developer platform, which basically has context editing and some kind of memory tool available in there. So you can see here that they talk about the whole idea of context editing. 
And this makes a lot of sense because if you think about it, as your context gets longer and you're doing sort of agent runs, et cetera, you perhaps still want to know the result of that tool, but you're more interested in like the most recent stuff and freeing up context to go forward. So you can see here, they've got this nice diagram of before context editing, after context editing. And this seems to be one of the key things that allows them to build longer running agents that if you've got this nice way to be able to summarize parts of that context and contract parts of that context, you can free stuff up for new things that you generate, but you can still have some reference to those early decisions. And perhaps then some of those decisions are going to be written to files so that your agent can actually make use of those. Now, in regards to this, the thing I found actually really interesting was not from Anthropic themselves, but was from Cognition, the creators of Devon. So obviously they're using models and agents for what they're hoping to be very long runs of being able to use developers tools for being able to edit and create code. And you can see in their blog post here, they talk first about that, okay, this is the new version is two times faster, that it's 12% better on their evals. But then they talk about this whole thing about how the model works differently and that how it actually broke some of their assumptions about how agents should actually be architected. They also break down the different parts of agents and talk about some of the results that they've seen. Now, this one I found really fascinating because when I first actually saw the model and started playing with it, I also felt that it was getting much better at planning. And that for me is something that's really exciting is that as these models can get better at not just creating a plan, but being able to read and update that plan and know where they are in that plan, that makes agents just a lot more reliable in general. And so here, the Devon people are saying actually that they are also noticing that this is up about 18% and that multi-hour sessions are dramatically more reliable as well as being faster. Now they go on to talk about some of the challenges that they actually had in here of dealing with this model that's aware of its context window and that it's actually editing bits out of its context window over time. And what does that actually create? So they talk about that they actually had to rethink their prompts for this because some of those summarizations weren't done in a way that their actual agents were made for using this. They also make the point about how the model takes lots of notes. And that while it's writing these notes to itself, perhaps for their use, those notes weren't as detailed as what they actually like. And they've had to basically rethink some of their prompts and some of the actions that they're actually getting it to do. So while I do think this feature is really interesting, it's certainly going to require you to rethink your agents and perhaps edit some prompts around this and make sure that you've got good evals for testing what actually happens as the backend platform starts to actually manipulate your context window. Now, finally, just going back to the virtual collaborator, one of the key things for that is the ability to see your computer, or at least at the start, to be able to see your browser. And while Anthropic basically had released Claude for Chrome a while back, it does seem that this model has been updated a lot for this specific sort of use case. Now the Chrome extension that they've released currently is only for people on the max plan, but my guess is it eventually will make its way to the other paid plans. And I also think that this model will probably also work a lot better with things like the browser use plugins that I've covered before in some videos. All right. Overall, this is a fantastic release. There's still other small things that I haven't had a chance to talk about in here, but I do see a clear pattern of them going through and making each of the components for what Dario Amade talked about in January as being the virtual collaborator. And as Anthropic seems to be focused a lot more on enterprise solutions, it makes sense that they do put all of these things in place for making that tool, which could massively increase people's productivity, as well as help them to be able to do tasks that they're just not able to do with things like Microsoft Copilot, etc. So I think as developers, we should be aware of these things that Anthropic is actually setting up. So we're able to take advantage of these things for the software and for the agents that we're building ourselves and keep an eye on how Anthropic is actually doing it for themselves as well. All right. I'd love to hear from people who've actually tested the model out. Are you seeing like me that this is definitely a lot better at certain things like planning, like being able to handle 
long running tasks, etc., or anything else that you've noticed about the model, please put them in the comments below. Anyway, as always, if you like the video, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.